Welcome friends across the UC Berkeley campus and uh, uh, across the bay at UCSF and at the Gladstone in, uh, Institute. It's really a truly an exciting day for us. It's been a, an exciting week uh, uh, with the Nobel Prize in physics as well as uh, 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 the chemistry prize today. Uh, I, I just wanna start off by saying, uh, Jennifer, you rock. Uh, I, I, I just know that uh, I, I saw that on the uh, UC Berkeley webpage, uh, you were there so excited and, and full of life. And, and, and uh, uh, it, it was just wonderful to see you that way. And, you know, the IGI rocks, uh, women certainly do rock. And uh, uh, I think that it's, it's also, it goes without saying that science rocks. And this is a week that we've learned to, we, we sort of celebrate scientists and the best in science. And, uh, you know, I think, it, I think we all know that science is awesome and that uh, basically uh, what, we, what we do best, uh, uh, I, I can, this is of course my own opinion, uh, but what we do best is basic science, uh, which is the morning star of all translation. And without basic science and curiosity driven science, we just don't get the real translation. And uh, the, the work that you've done uh, and is now going on at the IGI is a result of your own curiosity and wonder and awe in, uh, in the universe. Uh, let me just digress a moment and say what today's events mean to me. Uh, uh, and it's, it, it, it's uh, basically about how important fun is in our lives, fun and play. It's, it's one of the most ancient characteristics of human beings. And without it, we can't be creative. And having this kind of joy that we're all experiencing here today is a very important part of what sustains us. And of course, I think it, we're all feeling now, we have the pandemic, polarized politics. I won't, I won't get started on that. Uh, a kind of systemic racism in our society and have, being able to celebrate and understand the awesome power of the human mind is just something that, that, that really rocks me. And I think all of us in our community feel that deeply. Uh, okay, I, I, I would like to just sort of, uh, there are so many memories that I have of, of, of meeting you at a Gordon conference discussing possibly coming to Berkeley and Nick Cazzarelli was there at the time. But what I'd like to just end with is uh, when I first found out about uh, the uh, CRISPR-Cas technology, I didn't even know that it was called the CRISPR-Cas technology. You and Jamie and James Berger were walking out of uh, Stanley Hall and I was sitting there having coffee waiting, I think for John Curian and you came by and I said, hi guys, what's up? And you sort of sheepishly looked at me and said, we, we have something that's really gonna change the way people do homologous recombination. And I was thinking to myself, well, you know, you must have some crystal structure of Rec A uh, that would help you do recombination. And of course uh, you said, uh, we'll find out later what's, I'll tell you later what's going on. And it really did blow my mind. It really was transformational. And of course it is uh, one of the great inventions of the 21st. Okay, and uh, I'll end there. And uh, of course, uh, I, Carol Christ is our uh, uh, chancellor who also rocks. Carol. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. I'm delighted to join this celebration today and, and welcome a new Nobel laureate to Berkeley. Berkeley has a long history of Nobel laureates, but I'm so thrilled that today we're welcoming the first ever woman faculty member to be awarded the Nobel Prize. What a great day for Berkeley. What a great day for the University of California. 
The discovery of CRISPR-Cas9 is rightly being recognized as a tool that will have profound impacts on medicine, on agriculture, and on our understanding of fundamental biology. As the Nobel organization said earlier today, the work by Jennifer Doudna and Emmanuel Charpentier has given us the tools to rewrite the code of life. I could not be more proud that such important work happened right here at UC Berkeley and that Jennifer and her colleagues at the Innovative Genomics Institute are continuing to break new boundaries on this work for the benefit of all. Of course, we have our own version of the Nobel Prize here at Berkeley, the coveted Nobel, Nobel laureate parking spot. I hope that when things are back to normal, Jennifer, you'll be able to take full advantage of that rarest of all Berkeley perks. Seriously, my heartfelt thanks and congratulations. This is wonderful news, and it shows the world that UC Berkeley continues to be a true powerhouse in science on a global scale and always at the leading edge. I'll now hand things over to UC President Michael Drake for a few remarks. Well, thank you very much, uh, uh, Chancellor, and uh, I'm honored uh, and really thrilled as well to be joining the chorus of people and congratulating uh, Dr. Dowda on this uh, great work. One of the, the impressive things about prizes like this is, is what they do is they, they recognize discovery that has changed the way the people who know the most about the subject in the whole world think about everything that they do. It really does change the trajectory of the future, and that's a, a wonderful thing to be a, a part of. And I will say that it's a thrill for uh, all of us in the broad UC community to be celebrating this for a variety of reasons. Wonderful to have two prizes in science back-to-back uh, -back days. Wonderful to have those prizes won by women, the fourth and, and then the sixth and seventh women to win, the fourth for physics and then sixth and seventh uh, to win for chemistry. And what an important thing that is uh, to tell for women and for girls really all around the world to know that there is a great uh, future in science, a great future in education, a, a great future for all of us. I also uh, I'm really pleased uh, this week uh, to have the university doing so well because in our conversations with our, our regents and legislators and others who are working with us on uh, supporting our university as it goes forward, we can look at the wisdom of our forebears a generation or two generations ago who chose to invest in the quality of the university in the quality of the people that we bring to the university and the quality of the facilities that we have at the university to be able to create the science that leads to discoveries and, and prizes like the one we have today. It's the investment and wisdom of those in our past that create the, the platform for us to be able to build this new, new future. As an alumnus of the University of California, as is my wife, uh, we are proud. You know, we when something not so good happens at any one of the campuses, we feel bad. We want to make sure that we remind ourselves that we are really terrific when a wonderful thing happens uh, at, at our campuses. And congratulations, really, uh, to our broader community. And thank you so much for the, the great contribution to this discovery that's been made by coworkers and support staff uh, across the across the map at, uh, at at UC Berkeley that have created the the milieu that allows the great work to, to come forward. Uh, congratulations once again to uh, uh, Jennifer Dowden. They're really, really pleased, really, really proud. And now let me turn uh, over the um, the cyber microphone to uh, uh, Professor Jennifer Banfield, or Jill Banfield, excuse me, Jill. Well, putting it simply, I am thrilled for you, Jennifer. This award is so well-deserved, not just for the paper with Emmanuel, but due to your sustained efforts to understand the basic biology of so many aspects of CRISPR-Cas systems, as well as to advance its application in the treatment of human disease, in agriculture, and in microbial communities. Your stewardship of the field overall, including ethical aspects, has put UC Berkeley at the center of the genome editing universe. And I'm so glad that we finally got to work together after talking about it for so many years. And echoing Mike Botchen's comments, such fun it has been. Really, it's the thrill of discovery with students and postdocs and collaborators that makes working in an academic setting so very rewarding. You and your work are inspirational and will foster recruitment of future generations of young people in science. Huge congrats to you, Jennifer, and to your lab members, and what a day. I'll turn it over to the next speaker. 
Thank you, uh, Jill. Uh, my name is Deepak Srivastava, and I'm the president of the Gladstone Institutes. And uh, Jennifer, it's my great honor to congratulate you today. And uh, I think uh, you've heard a lot, everybody said a lot of great things about your science. And I've been impressed over the last few years uh, since you've opened your lab at, second lab at Gladstone, what a kind, compassionate, and caring scientist you are. And I think that was exemplified to me when you first uh, came to me uh, and wanted to have your CRISPR invention really make a difference for people all over the world suffering from various diseases. And that you had the vision to set up this second lab complementing your great effort at Berkeley uh, at Gladstone at Mission Bay uh, to interdigitate with our uh, prowess on human stem cells and deep knowledge of disease and, uh, and as a foothold into the medical community uh, at, at Mission Bay and at Parnassus. And it just it couldn't have been a, a, a greater vision. And uh, we're uh, on that path. And I'm certain we'll be executing on that uh, even in greater ways uh, in the coming years. And let me just say one thing about uh, your uh, role modeling. Uh, you know this, uh, but others may not. Uh, uh, I have two teenage daughters. They are inspired by you in ways that I haven't seen for anybody else. And I know that that just uh, is, exemplifies what I'm sure hundreds of thousands or millions of young girls all over the world uh, are seeing and feeling when they see what you and other great women scientists do. And the, the legacy of that is going to be tremendous over the coming years. So thank you and congratulations. And uh, I'll now turn it over to my uh, close friend and colleague, Sam Hoggett, uh, who's the chancellor at uh, UCSF and partner with me. Sam. I think you have to unmute, Sam. You'd think I'd know that by yeah, now. New, new, new to Zoom. <laughs> uh, Jennifer, it's just a huge uh, thrill and uh, honor for me to represent UCSF at this ceremony this afternoon. Um, rest assured, every single person at UCSF uh, is just filled with pride and uh, excitement about uh, the prize. Um, we knew it was coming, but it was just wonderful to hear about it uh, this morning. And I think it's terrific that you've got a background of the Golden Gate Bridge uh, linking the two sides of the bay, because that's what uh, you do with the uh, Innovative Genomics Institute linking uh, UCSF Berkeley and now Gladstone um, across the bay to really uh, push the science of genome editing uh, into the translational space where we can where we can help patients. and. I won't repeat what others have said, but I would like to just add the other inspirational um, side that I, I become aware of in, in working with you is your, your deep commitment to uh, bioethics and to make sure that this discovery is used for the right reasons and not the wrong reasons. And secondly, your commitment to access, uh, that this uh, technology become an accessible technology and once it moves into uh, clinical medicine, it becomes a, an affordable technology. And you know, coming out of uh, a basic science uh, background, as you do, uh, your, your immediate grasp of those two issues, which we struggle with every single day, um, is incredibly impressive. So uh, again, congratulations. Um, thank you for your partnership with UCSF. And uh, I'm representing 33,000 voices uh, in my congratulations to you. I'm not sure whether we can extend a free parking uh, spot, but I'll look into that. And uh, we're just very proud that you have a secondary appointment with us at UCSF. And now I think it's over to Jenny Hamilton, uh, a postdoc in your lab. Thanks, Sam. So on by behalf of Jennifer's students and postdocs, I wanna convey how excited we all are for Jennifer to receive this honor today. We threw an impromptu, totally socially distanced party this morning at the laboratory and over 30 of Jennifer's past and present trainees logged onto a Zoom call, even though we only gave them a few minutes notice when we threw this party together. And there, there were even more people that couldn't make it to that call. And I think this just really reflects the huge network of trainees that Jennifer has and the boundless respect they have for her. And this is because she's such a thoughtful and supportive mentor. So from all of us, 
Jennifer, thank you for cultivating a research environment where your trainees can develop the skills they need to develop into independent scientists. And thank you for being an inspiration to me personally, to your lab and to all young scientists everywhere. And so with that, I'll turn it over to Vice Chancellor for Research, Randy Katz. Well, uh, uh, Jennifer, I'm just so, so thrilled to have been asked to make a few comments here at, at uh, this event honoring this incredible award which you have received. I guess I speak for the voice of the rest of the research community at Berkeley. And I'm really struck by the story behind the discovery that led to the prize, particularly the collegial interactions you had with people like Jill Banfield who sort of identify the problem in her lab and the, the collaboration that you've had with many people at Berkeley to advance the CRISPR-Cas9 technology and of course with your co-winner Emmanuel. Uh, you know, they say you don't get a Nobel Prize for doing something people know how to do. And I certainly hope that the patent office is listening to that. Uh, you have done fundamental discovery but one with the promise of impacting society and impacting society for the good. And yet you are a leader in understanding the ethical dimension and engaging the public in those considerations. I can't think of a better spokesperson to navigate these complex waters. So an acquaintance of mine embedded himself in IGI and, I, and uh, Walter Isaacson and a book about you is coming out in the, in the new year. Uh, uh, I actually sent him an email earlier today asking him for some stock picks because he knows how to identify the winners. And the title of the book, which describes your work, your invention, uh, uh, your considerations is called The Code Breaker. And to add to that, I'd like to describe you as the barrier destroyer and the impact maker. And I uh, just want to leave you with your congratulations, Jennifer, for this incredible award. And with that, I'll transfer uh, uh, next. Actually, yeah. we have uh, Kay Hung. We don't have her on the line right now. So we're going to go straight to, um, to Dean um, Clark. So on to Doug. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I'm here. Oh, Kai Hung is here too. Oh, so. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. First Kai Hung is on now. Okay. Yeah. Hi. And uh, first, I want to say congratulations to Jennifer. I'm so happy to have been part of this epic journey for the past 27 years. And uh, Jennifer have been great leader and most importantly, a close friend. I'm so proud of you and the work our lab has done in the past three decades. This is truly a lifetime achievement. And Jennifer is a great mentor and is a great, I can say, great co-worker. And uh, we've been together always on the same wavelength as Jennifer said. Okay, turn to the next speaker. Thank you, Kei Hong. Jennifer, congratulations again. We all knew this was never a question of if, but of when. And we are all thrilled that when is now. Few discoveries, even at the Nobel level, have had such a great impact in such a short time as your groundbreaking work. It is a beautiful example of the power of collaboration and teamwork and of bridging basic and applied research. And as I mentioned this morning, your amazing work incomparable spirit and inspiring leadership embody what is best about the scientific tradition and collegial culture of the College of Chemistry and of UC Berkeley. So let me again say thank you, not only for your phenomenal research, which is reshaping the DNA world, but for being such a wonderful, supportive and collaborative colleague. We are so lucky to have you as a member of the Berkeley community. You inspire us every day. Thank you again, and congratulations. And now I will pass the baton to Jamie Kate. Hi, it's a real pleasure for me to be able to be sitting here next to Jennifer and um, just so proud of what you've accomplished. Um, your science has always been scintillating 
and you've always had an eye on chemistry from the origin of life, what, what RNA can do catalytically, and this work is just a continuation of that um, passion for science uh, and incredible work that you've done. Um, also, drawing people in to do these experiments has been a critical part, I'd say, of your success. And um, just so thrilled, so proud of you. Not surprised, um, very proud, and um, just, yeah, can't say enough about what you've accomplished. So with that, I will pass it off. I don't know who's next, so. Hey, Jamie, this is Brad Ringeisen, uh, the executive director. I think your uh, wife is next on the list. Uh, so uh, Jennifer, you want to take it over a little bit and uh, just the forum is yours to just, uh, you know, say, say what you would like about all, all of what you've experienced today. Um, well, first of all, I just want to thank all of you for, for coming and, and for being my colleagues. Um, President, President Drake, Chancellor Chris, Chancellor Hagrid, uh, Deepak, Mike, Doug, and, and, and all of you. It's, it's just, it is overwhelming, as you can probably imagine. And um, all I can say is that I, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm really, really proud to be part of the, the UC family and to be here at Berkeley and working with UCSF and the, and the Gladstone, it's a, it's a, it's a privilege to, to be part of all of this. I can tell you that when I was growing up in Hawaii, I, I uh, you know, I dreamed of, of doing chemistry and applying chemistry in biology someday, but I could have never imagined today. Um, and uh, it's just, it's just extraordinary. And I would just like to, um, you know, really acknowledge uh, many people who have, have um, helped me along the way. And I, I can't possibly name them all because there's so many. Uh, and so I will, I will just uh, give uh, a few shout outs. I just, I just really want to, to thank Martin Yinek, who was the postdoc in my lab, who did the, the, the original CRISPR work that was recognized uh, today and in collaboration with Emmanuel Charpentier and her, her student, Chris Chylinski. This was a, an amazing team. And uh, we also had a, under, an undergrad, um, Nikki Hauer, who was working with us that summer, who also did some of the, the key work. And that speaks to, I think, something Berkeley does extremely well, which is to welcome undergraduate students into uh, research labs and show them what, what science is really all about. It's not about learning facts in, in textbooks, it's actually about discovering the future. I've always been, you know, excited about doing science because I love the people I work with and, and, I, and I, I love the process of discovery. And it's, it's really those two things that go hand in hand. So I, and I think that really embodies what uh, University of California and certainly UC Berkeley, UCSF and Gladstone are, are all about. I'm, I'm just, I'm truly thrilled. I'm really honored. I can't wait till we're uh, out of COVID so we can, <laughs> we can get together face to face. And, and Chancellor Chris, thank you for that parking spot. I, do, I promise I will use it someday. All right, that's great, Jennifer. Thank you so much. So I'm Brad Ringeisen. I'm the relatively new, uh, freshly minted executive director for the IGI. I, I actually don't know how I can fill Jennifer's shoes in any extent at all. So it's been a wonderful collaboration so far and so glad to have her so intimately involved with IGI still on our board. Um, so my job today is to sort of moderate uh, questions and just additional comments from the amazing group of people that we have um, identified here. So if people would please just sort of start to put some comments or identify themselves in the chat, um, we'll be able to sort of march through some of those individuals that um, that really would uh, just want to reach out and just say thank you or some of their thoughts and words. And so if people want to start doing that in the chat, I will be able to let them in. What I did want to say really quickly, Jennifer, was that, you know, many of you uh, might not know where I came from, um, but I, I, I was at DARPA and DARPA knows a thing or two about innovation and discovery. Um, and I'll just tell a quick little story. Uh, you know, I, when I was sort of had the opportunity to come to IGI and, and at UC Berkeley, I went to the director of the agency and said, look, I've got this opportunity to go uh, to IGI. And, you know, what do you think? And he said, Brad, why are we having this discussion to get the, the ability to work with Jennifer Doudna on a daily basis? Uh, this could be the discovery of the millennium. Brad, you need to go. This is where you were meant to be. And so 
so it's good to know, Jennifer, that it, uh, the, 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 even at the level of, of someplace like DARPA, where the internet and self-driving cars and those types of discoveries, uh, it's, it's recognized that your contribution uh, really does stack up and, and possibly uh, exceed some of those things as well. So uh, honored to, to work with you. And I see this award as exciting towards the future. And I see it building towards the future. And I think that there's so much more that can be done. I'm truly, truly excited to see what can be done uh, over, over the coming years. All right. So uh, I think I'm actually going to recognize um, Mark uh, from Stanford. And I think that that's uh, someone that is definitely uh, worthy uh, of, of some well wishes. So Mark, uh, why don't you take over the floor here? Well, thank you so much, Brad. And, and I, I just want to say uh, it, it's such an honor, such a pleasure to be able to join my voice to all the voices we've heard all, already to convey. Our deep congratulations to Jennifer from myself, from all of my colleagues here at Stanford. It really is uh, a, a wonderful uh, a day. Um, uh, so much has been said already uh, about Jennifer, about your, your qualities, uh, your deep science, uh, your, your passion to apply that science uh, to help people, uh, your uh, uh, mentoring of students and postdocs, uh, uh, your interpersonal qualities. Uh, it's been such a joy for me to be able to interact with you as a friend and as a scientist. Uh, 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 the way you've uh, delved also into the ethical dimensions of the work. Uh, all of that's been said. I, I just want to put an exclamation point and perhaps just highlight one more thing uh, that's always struck me uh, about uh, you and your work, and that is the, the sheer elegance of your experiments uh, and uh, how you, you go about uh, proving your case and then making the case and presenting it uh, in scientific talks, uh, in your papers, uh, really, you know, truth and beauty and impact all come together uh, in the work and what you've done. And that is such an inspiration uh, to me and to so many others. So congratulations. Thank you so much, Mark. Uh, Bar uh, Barbara Osher, Barbara, do you want to, uh, to say a few words quick? Oh, you have to unmute, unmute, Barbara, unmute. There you go. Thank you so much. No, we still we still can't hear you. I'm so sorry. Maybe we could try to get that to get that straightened out. Um, I think I will recognize um, Theodore. Theodore, would you like to just speak up a couple words? You you always have some very uh, insightful thoughts. Oh my goodness. Um, pardon the nervousness. I, um, I'll just say what I said to Jennifer at four in the morning via text. Thank you for giving me and hundreds of thousands of people around the globe something really useful and fun and important to do for the rest of our lives. You know, it's thrilling to me that eight years ago on a bench in your lab, there emerged initial insight into what my favorite prop is, which is the structure of CRISPR-Cas that your lab solved complete with the, with, the, with, the, with this magic of this thing, the, the, the heteroduplice between RNA and DNA that makes it all work. And it's very safe to say there's you know, 294 participants that pretty much every lab uh, on the call and everywhere else has a CRISPR-Cas expression plasmid somewhere using it, using it daily. Um, and also thank you for me personally as someone who spent 20 years translating things for having the vision for having um, uh, your science and CRISPR-Cas um, impact the real world in a way that's fair, equitable, and affordable. Um, I think that this is a unique strength of a public, great public institution such as Cal, of the University of California in its entirety. And it's honestly, I could not imagine a better life than working at the IGI. And I suspect all of my colleagues feel that way. So thank you and congratulations. Thank you, Theodore. Uh, Judy Wade, um, Judy, you raised a great point about women and ethical science. I, I would love to hear your perspective on that as well, Judy. Yeah, you put me on. <laughs> <laughs> That's my job, Judy. My job is to put people on the spot today. So <laughs> I can't even get my video to work. We see, here you, we, my... see you. we see you in here. Oh, Judy. You do? oh okay. Um, I just, it's so fantastic. Um, you know, I was just listening. Uh, 
right before this to um, actually an event on out and out investors and, and uh, trying to sort of bring diversity and inclusion to investing. And it's so fabulous just to see two women win this prize. I think what you're doing for young women and young girls, but also taking something that you know, could be, you know, in this kind of time when you look at technology and some of the ethical issues with technology that you've always led with that light of ethical sort of science is fantastic. So congratulations as a proud alum of uh, UC Berkeley. I'm so excited for you and for what this means beyond science as well. Thank you so much, Judy. And then Ava, uh, Ava, would you like to say a quick word as well? Um. I just remember all those years in the seventh floor of a Stanley and, and seeing the science that was coming out of Jennifer. I was, I just put it on the chat. She has been a star for many years. She was a star before, uh, before CRISPR and, and, uh, and she's, she's, it can't possibly be more inspirational uh to all of us uh i honestly don't think she's human i think she belongs to some alien race of of people that are good at absolutely everything they do and they have immense capacity to pile up things and accomplishments and you know it's just i don't know what will be next i'm excited about what she's going to be doing in the future so congratulations jennifer fantastic absolutely Ava. i could not agree more that's fantastic um, Howard Shapiro, Howard, you might have an interesting perspective outside of the university system. Do you want to say a few words, Howard? Yes. Um, it, it's such an extraordinary moment to have someone recognized for such spectacular work in science. Um, I'm in the field. I'm a plant scientist, and many of you are in, in medicine, so I represent a different world. But the ability to end chronic hunger and malnutrition has been made a reality by the work that Jennifer and others have done together in this extraordinary moment. Uh, I, I can't say enough thanks about the fact that I see stunting ending in my lifetime caused by chronic hunger and malnutrition through the work and the ability we have to train people in the global south to solve these problems. And I remember from uh, a comment she made one time, just because we are not ready for scientific process, uh, pro uh, progress does not mean it won't happen. And I heard that and I was able to go to a number of ministers of African countries and explain to them what that meant for them and to get their buy-in to start understanding this technology and how it could be used. Uh, it's such a humanitarian piece of work. And uh, not all science ends up that way, but this is one democratized, will change the world. And uh, I'm honored to have the opportunity to uh, occasionally see Jennifer and meet with her and talk with her. And uh, she deserves a humanitarian award as well as the Nobel Prize. Thank you. Well said, Howard, thank you so much. Um, I do see a couple IGI staff on the list. Megan, I, I would love to hear your thoughts a little bit, Megan. Megan's part of our education and outreach team at IGI. Uh, Megan, I think you could really bring a great perspective. Sure. Um, not used to being put on the spot, but congrats, Jennifer. Um, you know, I'm a fan. I got my PhD in your lab and stuck around doing education and outreach for the IGI. Um, I think one of the things that inspires me the most about Jennifer or that I admire is just her ability to get things done. Like, I don't know many people who can want something to get done. And I know that it's really gonna happen because she wants it to happen. So it's really inspiring to work with you, Jennifer, and to be around someone who's so impactful. Um, sorry for putting you behind me like that. I'll, I can cover it. It's weird to look at yourself. Um, but yeah, it's, it's always been inspiring to be around you. And it's great to, be, to feel so supported at IGI doing outreach and engagement and things that are not usually super high on a, a really prominent scientist's list of things to do. Um, so I'm, I'm always thankful for that support and it's a pleasure to work with you at the IGI. And Megan, I always tell people that the IGI is, is a mirror of Jennifer because of her desire to have public outreach, ethical use of technology. These are things that, you know, equity and accessibility and it, and it really does make IGI unique and it, it's a mirror and reflection of Jennifer. Um, all right, uh, Brett, uh, this is a past postdoc. Post uh, so Brett, that'd be a great perspective. Yeah, thank you very much. Congratulations, Jennifer. 
Um, as I wrote there, I, I came from a developmental biology background, uh, studied that at Stanford and applied to Jennifer's lab to work on developing Cas9 into a therapeutic to treat the underlying cause of disease. And Jennifer uh, took me into her lab, which is full of biochemists and structural biologists, paired me up with a postdoc who had purified a lot of Cas9 and we made the ribonucleoprotein complex, delivered it into cells and showed that we could use that as a delivery system. Um, so I'm really thankful and grateful for uh, Jennifer taking a chance and me taking a chance to join her lab and have a uh, really me embedded in with scientists that had a completely different background and a way of thinking about science. And through that cross-pollinization, great synergies happened and um, you know, we're going to make CRISPR into therapeutics to treat the underlying cause of diseases and really make an impact on the well-being of people around the world. So thank you, Jennifer. And you do convey the spirit of collaboration and the joy of discovery. And you're going to be an awesome ambassador uh, to the world. Thank you very much. Thanks, Brett. That's great. And we're getting lots of messages, Jennifer, stacking up. So I, I apologize if I can't get to everyone. I'm going to have to start to go through uh, and, and pick and choose a little bit. I see an undergraduate uh, who put a note and uh, having a daughter as a junior in college right now uh, who is a biology chemistry major and is inspired by you, Jennifer. I would like to call upon Allison Bien if she would like to say a couple words. I think that would be great, Allison. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> hi. Um, I'm an undergrad who, uh, actually incoming freshman, who's currently working under a mentor in Jennifer's lab. Um, when I was a freshman in high school, I knew that I liked science, but it was kind of a mixed bag of all different kinds of science. And then when we first learned about CRISPR-Cas9 in my biology class, we watched a short little 10 minute video. I thought that this was something that was incredible and amazing. And then I went to read the 2012 paper by you and um, Dr. Shampente, and I was just blown away. Your work is always so fun to read and inspiring. And um, it's just, I think of you as one of um, very one of the top role models as a scientist and your work is always very inspirational. Um, um, thank yes. you so much, Allison. Thank you. All right, we also have a fellow Nobel laureate, Jennifer. Uh, we have Randy Schuckman. Uh, so Randy, please, uh, from one Nobel laureate to another. Thanks, Brad. Well, uh, uh, Jennifer, um, Sabia and I have been sitting here quelling, to use a Yiddish term all day, uh, with joy at your achievement. And in thinking about um, the situation we find ourselves in, this uh, these dark days of a pandemic and uh, and then what you've achieved and uh, how you're recognized today. I'm, I'm reminded of the University of California's first Nobel laureate, E.O. Lawrence, uh, whose prize was announced in October of 1939, uh, which those of you who know history will know that that was uh, just uh, one month after the start of World War II. And as a result, the ceremony in Stockholm that year was uh, disrupted. But fortunately, the Swedish consulate uh, in San Francisco uh, had a ceremony in his office uh, to uh, give E.O. Lawrence his prize. Um, I'm confident, however, that the Swedes uh, in Stockholm will make arrangements for you next year. Um, your achievement and your uh, personality and your poise are every bit the equal of E.O. Lawrence and his uh, role in founding science here at, at Cal is now repeated by you in your effort at the IGI. So uh, our, our, our hats off to you and uh, joy so sharing uh, this with you today. And so me and I have broken up a bottle of champagne to toast you on the occasion. Cheers. Cheers. All right, thank you. Thank you so much, that's great. And now we actually also get to go, Jennifer, to your, uh, your PhD advisor, uh, Jack, I believe is here, is I, I am told is also a Nobel laureate. Thank you so much, Jack, for being here. It means a lot. Got to un uh, you've got to unmute. There you go. Perfect, yeah. Jack. 
Yeah, okay. Okay, all right. Uh, uh, congratulations, uh, Jennifer. Uh, we're all so happy and so proud. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I I just like to tell everyone you were so fantastic, even even as a student. We all knew that you would do amazing uh, work, and I think you've done more than anyone could imagine. So uh, it's been wonderful to to watch and. Uh, uh, it's been a, a, it was a privilege to have you in the lab and a privilege to, to see you uh, do all the things that you've done. I can just say the only thing better than winning the Nobel Prize yourself is having one of your former students win it. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> That's fantastic, Max. Thank you so much. That's really special. Brad, I just, I just have to Absolutely. jump in there and, Absolutely. and, and say such a heartfelt thank you to Jack for taking the time to, first of all, to be on this call, but also for your incredible mentorship over the years, not only when I was in your lab, but all the years afterwards, when you've been supportive at moments when I needed it, I always felt like I could call you and, and talk to you about things. Um, you've been truly inspirational in your work. You continued it to be. And um, it's a real, real pleasure to have been trained by you and to have your, your mentorship. So I just, just really want to deeply thank you in front of all my colleagues here. It really means a lot to me. Thank you, Jack. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much to both of you. Uh, I'm going to go to Zhao Wei from the Packard Foundation. Uh, the Packard so Foundation has been <laughs> such an amazing um, a benefactor to the IGI and to Jennifer. So Zhao Wei, if, if you could say a few words, that would be fantastic. Good afternoon. Um, this is such an honor for me to be able to greet this remarkable group of individuals. Jennifer, on behalf of the Packard Foundation, I know Lynn Orr and Francis Arnold both wanted to participate in this celebratory call. We are so absolutely thrilled. You have been such a fantastic role model to all of us at the foundation. Your dedication and your commitment to uh, supporting young faculty members and young scientists um, is unparalleled. Um, over the last 17 years that I've been working at the foundation, I've had the opportunity to work with many remarkable scientists. And we're always just blown away by how responsive you are. Um, I keep hearing these uh, comments that Jennifer responds to everyone's emails and requests, and I really don't know how you do it with always such um, thoughtfulness and grace. Um, and so thank you on behalf of the Packard Foundation and on behalf of the incredible legacy and inspiration that you give to each one of our Packard Fellows. Wow, thank you so much, Zhao Wei. And Brad, if you don't mind, if I just jump in here, I have to, I have to give uh, a huge thanks uh, to Zhao Wei, to Chad English, who I know is on the call, and, and my uh, Francis Arnold, who chairs the, the Packard Scientific Advisory Board. It's extraordinary to, to work with all of you. And of course, I was incredibly grateful and honored to have been a Packard Fellow myself and then to have had the chance over many years to um, interact with all of the extraordinary scientists that you brought in through your support. And, and this is also a great opportunity to just say it more generally, I want to really thank a number of the incredibly generous donors. We have a number of them here on the call. And of course, on behalf of uh, my, my colleagues at our university, we, we are just incredibly grateful for your, your support over the years. I think we have Mark and Priscilla, uh, Mark Zuckerberg and Priscilla Chan on the call, Sandy, uh, Sandy and Joan Weil, Barbara Baker, uh, Howard Shapiro, who we heard from, uh, Coleman Fung, and, and, and we may have others, and I, I don't mean to leave anyone out, but I just, I really want to shout out uh, my, to, to all of you and Thank you, because you enable all of us who are doing creative science and, and often science that frankly is not likely to be supported initially by uh, you know, the uh, traditional sources to go forward. And that's really what makes real innovation happen. So we're, we're grateful to you and we look forward to continuing to partner with you as we uh, take, the, take the science into the future. All right, that's great. And I, and I think along that vein, uh, I'll call on Richard Merkin. Uh, Richard, you've made some comments. I think it would be a really great perspective. Oh, well, it looks like maybe Richard has moved off. I'll, I'll try to go back to Richard if he's there um, later on. 
All right, uh, let's see. I would like to try to call on Kathleen Collins, if that's possible. Um, Kathleen's from the Division of Biochemistry. I think, uh, you know, it's great to see bridge science. That's been one of the wonderful things about being involved with Bar Berkeley is just the amazing cross-disciplinary nature of the campus. Thank you so much, uh, Jennifer. Amazing, congratulations. As has been said, we knew it was gonna happen. The question was when. Uh, and I wanna thank you for being such a solid member of campus for teaching, your research, your service, everything uh, that you do intramurally and extramurally. And we're so happy to have recruited you and Jamie um, to our little RNA world. So congratulations. Thank you, Kathleen. Um, how about a Kemeny? I think a Kemeny Riley would be uh, would be great if you have a couple words as well. I sure do. Never at a loss. Um, hi everyone, Jennifer. Congratulations. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I work very closely with the Sergey Brin Family Foundation and lots of other philanthropists over the years. And whenever we are met with an intractable disease, uh, first name on the list is uh, Jennifer Doudna to think and bring in her advice on how we integrate um, gene therapy into intractable disease moving forward. Um, so this announcement, as everyone has said, um, is I'm, I'm just so glad that they got it right and early on to recognize you while it's all still fresh. Um, and, you know, on, on the equity piece, it's, it's wonderful to see not only a woman scientist, but that your discoveries are going to be used to help people of all backgrounds. I, when I think about sickle cell disease and how that affects, disproportionately affects um, Black people all around the world, and that, you know, your technology is being used and trialed for that disease area, it's just, it's amazing to see what's been done with your discovery. So congratulations again. From, from me, from all of us at the foundation, it's just incredible to, to see you recognized in this way. So congratulations. All right, thank you so much. Uh, we just have time for one or two more individuals. Um, I'm looking through some of the comments. I think it'd be great maybe if Lale, Lale Coat, if you were able to, to just talk a little bit about what Jennifer's meant to you. You still on the line? All right, no, it's okay. Sometimes I'm calling out people and they're, uh, they're, they're not quite there. Um, Hi. About, oh yes, are you there? Yeah, Lale, great. Could you speak, speak for just a little bit? Thank you so much. Unmute, unmute, Lale. Okay, can you hear me okay? Perfect. Okay, great. Well, um, like so many people have said, um, Jennifer, you've been an inspiration to a lot of us, even before we've uh, collaborated with you. And uh, sorry, it's a little, <laughs> this is an emotional day. Um, I just want to say that, um, you know, for uh, many years, I've been working with students from uh, many backgrounds and many disciplines. Um, and you've definitely been an inspiration to us. And so we are so proud of you. We love you. We're rooting for you. And uh, thank you so much. Congrats. All right, thank you so much. All right, I think I'm gonna pass it back over to Jennifer just to sort of wrap things up uh, this today. I, I hope what we wanted to do for you today, Jennifer, was just give you a mix of the, such the tremendous variety of people that you've touched their lives and just really inspired them. And uh, I, it's been tremendously meaningful and impactful to me to see all of those. So uh, thank you so much for all that you do. Um, and I'll pass it back over to you because I think uh, maybe you wanna close it out with some additional thank yous. Well, uh, thank you, Brad. First of all, it's just a real pleasure to be working with you at IGI. And I, I, wanna, I wanna thank you and, and Fyodor Ernov and, and all of our colleagues, Jill Banfield, Brian Staskowitz, Ross Wilson, Alex Marson, all of our colleagues at IGI who are making uh, a difference and moving forward with our, our vision for a sustainable um, and affordable access to, to fundamental technology. I'd like to, to I guess, end by just thanking everyone here. It so, means so much to me, it really does, to be part of this community and, and to hear, hear from all of you. It's just extraordinary. And, uh, and most of all, I wanna thank my incredible husband. I hope you can see him here. Uh, as you know, Jamie Kate is a longtime Berkeley faculty member 
an extraordinary scientist. We talk science every day at our house and I, I, every single thing I've ever done has been bounced off of his incredible intellect. And you know, it's really, it's really been a joint effort. So I, I wanna thank him from the bottom of my heart. It's been a, it's been a, a wonderful ride and, and you know, hopefully we have many more years uh, to, to uh, do science together and, and live our, our lives and, and share the joy of raising our, our son, Andy, who's now a Berkeley freshman. So I wanna thank Andy as well. They've been really patient uh, today for sure. And, uh, and, and I'm sure they'll have to be more of that going forward, but I just really, um, it means a lot to me. And, um, and thanks again to all of you. And we hope, hope to see you all in some, some capacity, hopefully not just by Zoom, but face-to-face -face at some point when uh, we're not dealing with COVID. Jennifer, is Andy around? He might be in class. Uh, oh, because I'd like to take a <laughs> screenshot of all of you. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, okay. He, we're going to try to track him down. Yeah, but he, he, he's doing all of his classes online right now, Mike. So uh, he may be in class. Good in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Here, here he comes. Here he comes. Okay, Mike, uh, we're going to give you a quick, uh, quick screenshot here. Getting close. Got it. All right. Thank you guys so much. Thank you to everybody. This has been absolutely amazing. I can't believe there were 300, over 300 people, Jennifer, that joined on such short notice. It's an honor to be in the presence of such amazing scientists and leaders um, and students. It's just absolutely amazing. So I think with that, I think we're going to sign off. Uh, we're going to continue to do great science. And uh, I really, really am excited to continue working with you and all of those, a lot of those that are on the, on the line today as well. So thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, Brad, and thanks, everyone. Congratulations. Thanks again. Yeah, congratulations. Congratulations, Jennifer. Yeah. Congrats, Jennifer. Thanks again, everybody. Congratulations, Jennifer. Congrats, Jennifer. <laughs> Bravo, bravo. Good job. Uh, great to see you, Walter. Walter, thank you for that lovely piece in the New York Times. I didn't get a chance to write you back yet, but amazing. It's all history. It's fun to be along for the ride. So congratulations, Jennifer. Thanks again, Walter. We'll talk soon. Sure. Thanks so much, Jennifer. This was wonderful. Um, haven't seen you for a while, but I will. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I hope. Yeah. Yeah. Good to see you, Steve. Okay.